demonstrated that you're pretty good at PT, you've passed TAC prep, you've passed all the physical evals, then you move on to the TAC P schoolhouse. What are you? What are you? Count. Huh. Block one. Block one of the TAC P schoolhouse is five weeks long. Block one of the TAC P schoolhouse is your radio block and your communications. In this block, you're gonna learn how to use the radios, how to practice radio efficacy, all the different types of radios, how you talk on the radio, how to program radio frequencies, how to troubleshoot a radio if it's not working, and antenna theory. You're gonna learn all of that in block one. Also in block one, you're gonna do water confidence, where you have to jump in a pool with all of your gear, and then you have to ditch your gear and then swim to the side of the pool. That's the only water con that you need to pass in the TACP pipeline. Also in block one, you're still gonna be PT in every single day. The TACP Schoolhouse has strength and conditioning coaches and they're gonna follow a program and not injure you. They're gonna build you up progressively throughout the schoolhouse in PT and with rucking. However, you are in block one of the schoolhouse and the instructors are still gonna kinda crush you. In block one of the schoolhouse, you're gonna have to pass a four mile ruck and you're gonna have to pass your block one PT test. In block one, there are a few progress checks that you need to pass in order to move on to the next block, such as how to program a frequency, how to troubleshoot a radio, and how to be radio etiquette. Block two of the TACP schoolhouse is five weeks long. In this block, you're gonna learn the basics of map reading and navigation. Some of the things you're gonna learn in this block are map reading, map basic skills, plotting grid coordinates, tactical map symbols, using military GPS, also known as the dagger. Also, you're gonna be doing land navigation, you're gonna be doing vehicle navigation, and you're even gonna be getting an intro into combatives in this block. And combatives looks like this. You're also gonna have to go through your first field week. And in this field week, you're gonna have to pass all your navigations, your land nav, to include your day navigation, night navigation, vehicle navigation. And throughout the field weeks, you can't lose stuff, and you have to remain tactical or else you can get recycled. You're still gonna be PTing every day. Again, you have a strength and conditioning coach that is leading the workout program that the instructors are following. But again, if you're not on your P's and Q's, you're not paying attention to detail, you can still get smoked and you can still get motivational PT throughout the schoolhouse. The PT that you have to pass in this block, a six mile instructor led ruck and your block two PT test. Block three is four weeks long, and it's going to be your tactical block. In block three of the Tactics Schoolhouse, these are some of the things you're going to learn. You're going to learn about rappelling, shooting, field skills, small unit tactics. You're going to even learn how to do patrolling to include ambushes, reacting to contact, reacting to IDF, and squad attack. In this block, they actually teach from the Ranger Handbook, and you're gonna have to pass evaluations for all those tasks. In this block, you're gonna have your second field, which is gonna be one week long. And in this field, you're gonna be doing tactical movements, and your team is gonna be getting missions that you're gonna have to go out and execute. Again, if you aren't being tactical or you lose stuff, you can also fail the field week if you are not conducting your missions properly. In this block, you're gonna do your final ruck. It's gonna be a 12 mile ruck with all of your gear on, is gonna be about 105 pounds. And now I'm talking your helmet, your weapon, your uniform, with everything to include your water, is gonna be about 105 pounds. And you have to do it in under four hours. In block three, you're also gonna to have to do your final PT test in this block. Hit them with the transition. Block four of the P Schoolhouse is seven weeks long. This is gonna be your close air support phase. Now, in this phase, you're gonna learn Army and Air Force structure, the basics of airstrikes, close air support, the steps for close air support, and how you're gonna coordinate this type of airstrike. You're gonna learn more tacky equipment like range finders, and then you're even gonna do three simulators. A simulator is like a video game. You're gonna actually get in, and you're gonna to have to conduct simulator missions and pass them. Lastly, you're gonna do one more field week. And in this field week, you're gonna do close air support. And you're gonna demonstrate that you're gonna be able to go out into the field and coordinate airstrikes out in the field. If you pass the final field week, you have one more week of the TACP Schoolhouse left. And there you're gonna be doing digitalated casts. And on that very last Friday, you're gonna graduate and you're gonna get your TACP beret. In this block, you're still gonna be PTN, you're still gonna be expected to be a physical stud, but there are no evaluations in this phase for PT. Oh, oh.
moving up and down again. Sir! In Air Force Air School, you're gonna go through some academics for the first week, and then on the second week, you're gonna go out into the field. In the field week, you're gonna learn how to find food, you're gonna learn what you can and can't eat in the wilderness, you're also gonna learn knots, you're gonna learn how to build shelters, fires, you're gonna learn how to survive out in the elements, and you may have to go through in the winter when it's covered in snow, and you're gonna be out there in the field the entire time. And you're also gonna do all of this with no food. You get about three MREs for five days of the field. So yeah, you're, you're hurting by the end of it because you haven't been eating. You're gonna get back to base. They're gonna train you up again uh, to go out to the field a second time. And then you're gonna go out to the field again for another few days. Sear is actually a really fun time. And you basically are gonna be going on a three week camping trip. It's a good time. Airborne. Three weeks of mind and muscle pushed to the limit. If you don't think you can cut it, don't even try. At airborne school, you're going to learn how to jump out of planes and not die. They're going to teach you how to exit the aircraft and how to land when you hit the ground so you don't break your leg. All this is done with a static line parachute, meaning as soon as you jump out of the aircraft, the static line is going to pull your chute for you. All you have to do is exit correctly and land properly and you'll be all right. They're also going to teach you how to jump with a rucksack and how to maneuver your rucksack once you get into the air. At Army Airborne School for the first two weeks, you're gonna run three times a week, with your longest run being five miles. But uh, throughout Airborne School, you're gonna be running everywhere you go. So you're gonna be running a lot at Airborne School, but after the Tacky Pipeline, the school is gonna be a joke on the PT side. And those two days that you don't run, you're gonna be doing some sort of calisthenic exercises. And doing it with the Army, it's tons of fun. But anyway, they're going to teach you how to fall for the first two weeks. You can actually get recycled at airborne school if you don't fall right. You also have to take an army PT test, super easy, two minutes of push-ups, two minutes of sit-ups, two mile run, and under like 18 minutes or something ridiculous like that. Super easy. You'll get through that and you'll pass no problem after going through the Tacky Schoolhouse PT. You're going to have to do five jumps with them being day jumps, night jumps, and then you'll have to do jumps with combat equipment and jumps without combat equipment. Airborne. There's nothing like it on Earth. Once you finish all the courses in the TACP pipeline, you finished TACP schoolhouse, you finished SEER and Airborne school, you're going to go back to San Antonio and go through a brand new FTU that's starting in October. In the past, guys would finish the pipeline and they'd go straight to their units and they'd start getting trained there. Well, the FTU is bringing everyone back to San Antonio and everyone is gonna get standardized training. Everyone's gonna go through the exact same thing. The FTU stands for Formal Training Unit. In the Formal Training Unit, you already have your beret, you are a TAC-P, but you're gonna to have to go through additional training to get fully qualified as a TAC-P and get your JTAC certification. The FTU is standing up in October of 2020. The FTU is brand new, and this is gonna be new information for a lot of people. Phase one of the FTU is the combat field skills phase. This phase is gonna be 16 weeks long. Again, this course is just getting stood up. They're looking right now to have a Q course. In this phase, you're gonna learn the JTAC Memorandum of Agreement. You're gonna get certified on all the TAC-P five level tasks. And also, in this phase, you're gonna learn all the JTAC academics. Previously, guys would go through JTAC QC and they get a couple weeks of academics before they actually went out into the field week of JTAC QC. Well, in this phase, they're gonna be getting all the JTAC academics in phase one. Phase two of the FTU is gonna be the strike phase. The strike phase is four weeks long and it's gonna be at Nellis Air Force Base in Las Vegas, Nevada. In this phase, you're gonna go through two weeks of simulator missions and then you're going to go through two weeks of live fly missions. Now at the end of the strike phase you're going to get your JTAC evaluation. The goal of the FTU is to make you JTAC qualified once you leave the pipeline and then as soon as you show up to your first unit you're going to be JTAC qualified. That's the intent. Again the FTU is still new. It's going to be up and running this October of 2020. So if you're going to the pipeline expect that it's gonna be a little bit longer. However, you're gonna get trained a lot faster and you're gonna be a JTAC a lot faster than it would have when I went through 10 years ago. So it's a good thing you guys get to go through this course 
and it's certainly helping the TAC key crew fill out that we can get all of our five level tasks knocked out and all the TAC keys can get their JTAC certification coming out of the pipeline. Hopefully this is pushing you guys out more information and you guys are better able to prepare going into the TAC key pipeline. So lastly, here are the courses that you need to go to and pass in order to be a fully qualified TAC key. Yeah, Air Force Basic Training, Special Warfare Prep, TAC key Prep, the TAC key Schoolhouse to include all four blocks, SEER, Airborne, and lastly, the new formal training unit in phase one and phase two. Thank you guys for watching the current TAC key pipeline part two. If you guys have questions, go ahead and just drop your comment down below. At the very end of this series, I'm going to do a Q&A, and I'm going to hook you guys up with my best answers. Next week's going to be a good one. Next week, I'm going to do my time as a TACP instructor, but most importantly, focusing on the biggest mistakes that I saw students make in my time there. Now, thank you guys again for watching. Until next week, I want you guys to all stay funky.